gives you a few different options for setting defaults and I'm gonna go through both of them but then I'm gonna tell you which one I prefer and why I prefer it so uh, the first one is to actually load it in as SQL so you'd create a database migration and then you would set a default and uh, and the default would be listed right here in your schema file that's one way of doing it. I really am not a fan of it, mainly because I don't like using SQL for something that I could use a method call for in the model. And the reason for that is with SQL, I need to create a database migration. I have to go through a bunch of steps and uh, if I ever want to change it in the future. And I'd much rather just change a line of code in the model. I feel like I have a lot more control that way. So the way to set it up using a callback is uh, is here in the model file. And so I'm going to create a callback here and I'm going to say after initialize set defaults and then I'm going to create a method down here copy and paste this make sure there are no spelling mistakes and here I can set up all the defaults that I want so I can say self dot percent complete bar bar equals 0.0. If you didn't follow along with that, don't worry. It's a little bit confusing at first, even with just a few lines of code. I'm going to go through it line by line. So after initialize, what this means is when the object itself is initialized, it's going to run this method. And when that happens, it's going to call this method down here. This method has a few things it does. First, it calls self dot percent complete. You call self in the model file and it will call that specific instance. So in this case, it will call a specific project. I can't just call percent complete because it needs to know which value in the database that it needs to be talking to. In this case, after the records initialized, it's going to look at the percent complete attribute for that specific project. From there, this may look a little weird to you. And it did for me when I came uh, and started learning Ruby uh, a while ago. It, what it did is, uh, or what it does, is it's called a conditional assignment operator. And what that means is it first looks for percent complete and it sees if the value is set to nil or if it has a value. If it has a value, then it just skips this entirely. So if it has a value of say 50%, it just says, oh, there's nothing for me to do here and I move on. If though it looks at it and it finds that it's nil, it's going to assign it to whatever this value is. So let's try this out in the wild. I'm going to pop open the terminal, hit Rails S, and then open up the browser. And I'll close out of that. Here we go. Okay, so I can start this up by clicking on a new project and percent complete, testing defaults. Description can be anything. Uh, I'm going to wipe this out hit create project and there you go you see our percent complete even though I wiped it out is set to 0, 0.0 now there's one small thing I'd like to fix not with this code but with the form itself you know projects form and I don't want a user being able to say what percent complete the project is we're gonna have uh, tasks that do this automatically so I'll hit save come back here and when I hit new project, you can see that element's no longer in the form. I can say testing again, hit create project, and you can see our default worked. Now, one last thing, you may wonder why I used after initialize. There's actually a pretty long list of callbacks, and one of them that you may be tempted to use is after create. But the problem with this is what will happen is with after create, you'll actually wipe out 
values that you may or may not want to uh, wipe out. So uh, say that you have a default that you set up and you have a certain value you want assigned to it if no value is there. After create will actually go after the whole thing's been built and then it'll go and assign that value afterwards instead of right at the beginning. For default, you want it right at the beginning or else you may run into some data conflicts and uh, this one can actually be very confusing. So you wanna make sure to put after initialize here and then put all the values in there. Now the nice thing about this is, uh, and part of the reason why I like doing it this way as opposed to in the schema uh, or in a database migration and shown in the schema file, I can control any of these values uh, right here. So say that I had a big table and I had 10 defaults that I wanted. I could load them all up right here and set all the values and be able to change them whenever I want and be able to uh, manipulate them however I need very quickly. No changes to migrations, nothing like that. So this is the most efficient and easiest way to do it. This is the way I run my defaults for all my production applications. So I think this is a, a really nice way to set defaults in a Rails application.